Hello again, 1400 scale model fans. Again, that's probably just me for now. Uh, today we're going to do a couple RVs, we're going to do a couple airport tractors, buses, fire trucks, and uh, a little bit more. Alright, so we're starting off today here with something called the Coachman 404 RB Sports Coach from 2019. It's one of those big, you know, RVs that has the rooms that slide out of it when it's parked. So this one's shot in, all these are shot in Tamiya acrylic paints, alcohol-based paints. I find that the metallics are probably not the best choice to paint these things, though. Uh, all these models are, you know, 1400 scale, and they're from Shapeways.com. In this, they're printed in the smoothest plastic, so the highest resolution plastics. All right, so I'll put that away. This next one is the RV from the Walking Dead uh, TV show. I actually don't watch that TV show, but uh, I thought the you know the RV is cool. It's called a Win. It's a Winnebago Chieftain D28 from 1973. I know Greenlight I think makes an, a 164 scale version of this, but it's cool enough that I decided to make it a 1400. All right, so this one's got a weathering on it because it wants to look old. This next one is another Winnebago, I believe. Let me just check here. Sorry. I don't remember all the things I make, what they're exactly called. You try to remember a few thousand vehicles. It's not easy. Uh, this is a Winnebago Chieftain 33 from 1986. So it's not really, it wasn't something I really wanted to have, to be honest with you. But uh, I'll explain in a second why I made this model after it spins around a, a little bit more. Okay. The reason why I made that model is because there's an old movie called Spaceballs. And Spaceballs is like a spoof on Star Wars. It's by Mel Brooks. It's a really funny movie. I like it. But it, funny in a 1980s kind of way. Or was it the 1990s? I forget. Anyways, that previous RV was the basis for this spaceship. So that's why I had to make the first one so I could make this thing. I forget what this is called in the, the movie. Please leave a comment if you remember. All right. Let's move on to some airport uh, tugs or tractors, things that are used to move airplanes around. That's the reason why I made all these 1-400s in the first place. This one is called a Jet 16, and you'll notice it's quite small. This is my reference, by the way, in all my videos now. It's a U.S. Penny and it's got a classic Range Rover on 1400 scale on it. So this thing's smaller than a, a regular you know, SUV. It's hard to focus on. It's also really hard to paint. So, oh well. The next one coming up is a Komatsu. And I actually did a video of a 1200 scale die cast of this thing. It's quite nice. You might want to look that up. But this is called a Komatsu WT500E, so it'd be an electric uh, tractor. This is a big heavy one, you know, this is meant to move the big commercial airplanes around. As you can see in comparison to Range Rover, it's quite huge. You notice know, some roughness to the uh, sides? That's because there's some wax used in the printing of these models and I failed to clean it off nicely enough. Oh well. And one 400, I mean look at my finger, right? It doesn't seem to matter. They're so small. Okay. This next tractor is a, called Electro, L-E-K-T-R-O. I'm assuming that's the company. And the model is the AL200. So it's a really low slung uh, tractor. I'm not really sure what kind of planes this is meant to move around. But uh, it's different. It looks like a doorstop, you know. These tiny little tires and stuff. All right, sorry. The next one is a relatively large one as well. It's called a Schaff, I think. It's a German company, and the model is the F396C. So this one actually has cabins on the front and back because all these things have to go forward and reverse, you know, forward to pull the plane forward, but reverse to back it up away from the, uh, you know, gate, so. And I think a lot of these, you know, the cabins actually raise up and down so they can see a little bit better over the airplane tires and stuff like that. All right, moving to buses now. We have a 
a bus based on a World War II uh, vehicle. But this is a GMC duck butt to duck boat tour bus. They're called ducks, and uh, they took all the old World War II. You know, I guess these are meant to move troops onto the beaches. But then they put cabins on them and they become tour buses, you know, that can drive on the road, but also just drive into a river or whatever. So I think places like Chicago and Boston and places with water might have some of these things running around. All right, the next one coming up is an interesting one. The Pope Mobile, one of the Pope Mobiles. He has many. This is an older one. This is this one is made by Leyland, so that's a British uh, bus company, I believe, and they modified it to have that cabin on the top, and then the you know, stairs in the back. You just walk right up into the back of it. So, yeah, pretty big vehicle for a Pope mobile. This next one is a uh, forty-foot GM or Freightliner GM bus. It's, I think it's called a GM40 for 40 feet, and it's made by Freightliner. That's a U.S. company. They make trucks and all that stuff. But it's like a big, like, it, it looks like a big Las Vegas party bus to me. You know, something you'd rent for, like, a bachelor's party or something like that, and then you have entertainment on there. Okay. This next one is an old-school bus called a Bluebird TC2000. I painted it blue because it's called a Bluebird, but I think these are actually meant to be school buses. I think Bluebird is a school bus company, so probably the poor choice of color, but hey, whatever. It's not going to kill me. This next one is a big one. It's one of those double-decker tour buses, and this is called a Marco, Marco Polo, is I think the bus company, and then the model is the Paradiso 1800 DD from 2017. Anyway, this is a big bus. I've never seen one in person. I'm going to assume these are running around Europe. I'm going to assume also the two front axles steer. So, yeah, again, looking at that Range Rover, it's kind of a big one. In fact, let me move this Range Rover a little closer to the middle. And actually, for some reason, the solar spinner needs more light. All right. This last bus is called a Torsis. I think the brand is Torsis, and it's called the Praetorian. And it's an off-road bus, so it's meant for, you know, snow travel, I think, and running off 4x4 uh, trails, but as a tour bus, I'm going to assume. So it's a pretty modern design. I think it's a relatively modern vehicle, at least looking at the styling of it. Okay. Uh, we got a few more, less than 10. Now we're getting, it. here's a race truck, a Kamaz 4911 model. And this is used uh, in the Paris Dakar Rally. Uh, I don't know what year it is, to be honest with you, but uh, Kamaz has won the Paris Dakar, or maybe it's not Paris Dakar anymore, but there's a Dakar Rally many times, I believe. So I just like the idea of racing a semi truck. This next one is uh, a big truck compared to that Range Rover. It's a Unimog, a modern Unimog, called the U500 long wheelbase. And this is this model is from 2008, so kind of a modern vehicle. Very tall. It's like the size of a commercial truck front end. Yeah, it's just a big vehicle. All right, I'm trying to arrange these back here in, in order so I can show all of them at the end. Now, if you've ever watched the movie uh, Real Steel, <laughs> Real Steel, that's with uh, Hugh Jackman, and there's a bunch of fighting robots for entertainment, which, you know, humans do already. It's pretty sad. Uh, but this is called the International Harvester ACO Sightliner. So International, again, is a U.S. truck company, and uh, the ACO Sightliner, I think it's called the Sightliner because it has two small windows in the front, below the windshield so you can actually look down you know at the front end of the truck easier so it's such a strangely proportioned truck that I decided to model this one all right 
The next one is a Chinese truck called a Dongfang. And this is a three axle propane transport vehicle. So, you know, you gotta move propane around. And uh, I was able to find dimensions and drawings of this, so that's why I modeled it. Yeah, Dongfang. All right, we got a few fire trucks coming up here. So this first one is called an ALF Eagle. I think ALF is the brand of the fire truck company. And uh, this is the Eagle, so it's just a two axle, you know, one of the smaller guys. This next one is a more classic one. It's a Alf Aerial Quint fire truck, of course. So it just looks like it might be from the 70s or 60s or something like that. This one I modeled where you can actually uh, move move the ladder horizontally. You can't pivot it up and down. I mean, it thinks so small. Okay. Uh, I did want to have a big one though, you know, the, the one where you can have, you have the cabin in the back and they steer the rear end. So this is called a KME TDA 101 foot fire truck. And this one, I have it so the, both things articulate. The uh, ladder moves side to side and the front end moves side to side. And the last one is a classic fire truck, I believe from Russia. It's a Zill 131 AS40 from 1970. I think Zill is the brand. I think Zill is known for making military vehicles, but correct me if I'm wrong, I've never lived in Russia. Right. So only two more. And now here's a street sweeper. This is a called an Elgin Pelican Street Sweeper from 2015. I'm going to assume Elgin is the company that makes these things, but it's got three tires and steers from the rear. And, uh, yeah, I remember seeing these, you know, driving around in the, in the U.S. And the last one is just a standard vehicle. It's a Mercedes Arox dump truck. And uh, I made the poor choice of painting it silver. For some reason, it's, to me, a silver paint looks really big and flaky on these tiny little models. Okay. Get the reference out there. <clears throat> All right, well, that's it for today's 1-400 uh, scale vehicle show. Uh, stay tuned, uh, got a few more subjects to come about. Actually, I might not put these out in order, just to mix it up a little bit better. Alright, thanks for watching today. I'll see ya.